lights up on a nice, warm, inviting summer day. We hear the sound of kids playing and indistinct neighborhood noises. As we fully light up, we can see we are on the lawn of a house. Slowly, from the right side of the stage, out comes Anna, carrying with her a makeshift booth. She has on an ordinary, if not somewhat frumpy looking clothes, and she has on a pair of Coke bottle glasses. She slowly plops the booth center stage and, adjusting her glasses, she sighs happily, almost excitedly, as she flips over a sign to put in front of her. The sign reads, Kissing Booth. She pulls up a chair that was already present on stage, sits down inside the booth, and she waits. Several moments go by as Anna waits in silent anticipation. Meanwhile, a boy, Travis, comes walking onto the stage. He spots Anna and her booth and walks over to her curiously. He reads the sign, then, puzzled, he looks to the audience and mouths the words, Kissing Booth? His curiosity takes over and he slowly clears his throat. Um, <laughs> hey, uh, Anna? Hmm? Ah, Travis, good afternoon. Hi. Say, Anna, do you mind if I ask you a question? Well, I suppose it depends on the nature of the question. For example, if you were to ask me, what do you think of the weather today, Anna? I'd be more than happy to talk about what a nice sunny day it is and how there's just the right amount of breeze in the air so that it isn't too hot. On the other hand, for argument's sake, if you were to ask me, gee, Anna, what's it like going through life with such big honking glasses like you have? I think I'd mind that a lot. In fact, I'd probably be extremely offended by such a question. I, <laughs> I, I get the picture. Um, what I was going to ask was, since when are you running a kissing booth, Anna? Pardon me? Well, look. It says right there, kissing booth. Gee, I didn't know you were interested in kissing boys all of a sudden. Oh, what? Kissing booth? What are you... Ugh. Oh, for heaven's sake. What's wrong? Oh, gracious. This is the wrong sign. It wasn't supposed to read Kissing Booth. It was supposed to read Ask Anna's Advice. Oh, goodness. I must have grabbed the wrong sign when I was walking out the door. That Kissing Booth sign was when my two older sisters, Ava and Annette, set up their own booth at the carnival last weekend to raise extra spending money for themselves. Advice, huh? Yes, indeed. I am now in the business of giving advice to people in need of it, kids and adults, just for one dollar. Any questions you may have, I will answer it for you. Huh. Well, gee, that's swell of you, Anna. Why, thank you. Believe me when I tell you I'm not in the kissing game at all. Not like Ava or Annette. I mean, not that I'm opposed to kissing per se. I suppose it would depend on the factors. I mean, if, say, you wanted to kiss me, I wouldn't object. You're, you're awfully cute, but uh, it would need to be just a peck, not one of those slobbery kinds of kisses my older sisters do with boys their age. Blech, gross. Though, I do suppose they look rather happy afterwards. So Anna, Anna! <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> it's, it's fine, Anna. I, I believe you. I get the picture. So, would you like to be my first customer? Just one dollar and I shall dispense to you any advice you need. What do you say? Oh, gee. I give you my personal guarantee that this advice will be the most helpful advice in the world. In the galaxy, even. The universe, everything. And if not, I will give you a 100% refund. No questions asked. Uh, Anna, don't lead in with that. We'll never make any money that way. What will stop people from just claiming your advice didn't work? A beat. He slowly fishes out a dollar from his pocket and hands it to Anna. Gosh, why not? You are really smart. I'm pretty sure you'll give some swell advice. Now, aren't you the sweetest thing? Thank you. A beat. Anna examines the dollar. It's a slow, thorough, meticulous examination. This goes on for a comically long time. 
as Travis stares in confusion. Um, Anna? Anna? Yes? What are you doing? Just checking to make sure this dollar is legit. On the up and up, as they say. What? Well, hey, you never know when you'll get slipped a counterfeit bill. I need to be careful. Uh, Anna, why the heck would I give you a fake dollar? You might be a scanner behind closed doors. Oh, for Pete's sake. The dollar's real, Anna. Real. Now, come on. Let me tell you the situation I'm in, and you can dish out some advice. I'm going to double check that dollar later, just so you know. Brother. Now then, light on me, Travis. What advice do you need? Well, it's like this. See, my parents want me to do some kind of activity for the summer so I'm not just sitting in the house all day playing video games. But the problem is, my parents want me to do two very different things. Oh. Yep. See, my mother wants me to try out for the musical the local community theater is going to be doing. Oliver! She thinks I'd make a good or artful dodger. Mm-hmm. 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 Interesting. But my father, on the other hand, wants me to try out for the summer league football team. He thinks I'm good enough to be quarterback. Ah, mm, mm. yes, indeed. Now, I I think both sound like cool things to do, but I only have enough time to do one of them. I don't want to disappoint either of my parents, though, as well. What do you think, Anna? What should I do? Anna slowly puts a hand to her chin and strokes it for several long, silent, comical moments. Travis waits in anticipation, and waits, and waits. Well, what do you think? Uh, Anna? Please, not while I'm thinking. Oh, gee, sorry. Mm. Mm Mm-hmm-hmm. Mm-hmm-hmm. Mm. 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 Well, Travis, let's mull over the pros and cons of this, shall we? For you see, every option in life has at least a few pros and cons. The best decisions you can make, though, would be where the pros outweigh the cons, where there's only a few cons, but they aren't deal breakers, while the pros are just good enough that you don't care a lick out of cons. Do you follow me? I think so. Now then, first, let us consider your trying out for the musical. Now, having been in plays before, I can tell you, it's a lot of fun being on stage, singing and dancing and acting. Audiences adore you. And you also get to meet lots of new friends too. Well, hey, I like making new friends. Indeed. However. However? However, there is the fact that you must not only memorize lines, but also memorize blocking and dance steps as well. And if you slip up even once, the show could be a disaster. Just once? Just once. Why, I remember last year when Horace Gluckenmeyer and I were in the play The Adventures of Princess Bubblegum in the enchanted forest of candy and sweet things. I, naturally, was Princess Bubblegum, and he was Prince Licorice. Now, in one particular scene, Horace, as Prince Licorice, was supposed to kiss my hand and say, Oh, Princess Bubblegum, you are so beautiful. Marry me, and we shall flee to my lodge in the hills. But do you know what he said instead on opening night? He said, Marry me and we shall lodge with my fleas in the hills. Oof. Horace was embarrassed. Let me tell you, he refused to go on for the rest of the performances we had. Yikes, that does not sound like fun. Well, perhaps then we should consider your trying out for the football team. Now, football is a fun sport to play, and it's also a good way to make new friends. 
Not only that, but you'll be exercising every day. You'll get faster and stronger as you keep on playing. Well, hot dog, that is a big bro. Dad will be proud as heck to see me getting stronger. I'm sure he would. However. Uh, however. However, one cannot dismiss the danger of a mishap on the field. A mishap? Oh, yeah. Do you know how many injuries football players get every year? Concussions? Contusions? Broken bones? Broken bones? Especially broken bones. Why, just last year, Horace Glockenmeyer was on one of the football teams, the Bay Area Bruisers, and... Wait, wait, wait. Horace? The same kid who played Prince Licorice? Yes. Gosh, Horace sure has a lot of hobbies. Travis, please, don't interrupt me while I'm in the zone. Now then, Horace was quarterback in the big game against the Mott City Molars, and on one play, he went back to pass and whammo! Three huge kids from the Molars sacked him, sacked him and piled right on him. Poor Horace, his left leg was broken in six places. Six? Six. Goodness, it sure did make for an awkward situation when he had to play Prince Licorice two weeks later. <laughs> but gee, it was kind of funny listening to him hobble around with that protective boot on his left leg. It was all step, dunk, step, dunk, step, dunk. Uh, Anna, for God's sake, you're not helping me. Uh, I, I'm not? No! In fact, you just made both options sound horrible but my parents want me to choose one of them. Oh, this is supposed to make things easier, not stress me out. Sheesh, thanks for nothing, Anna. Travis begins to walk away as Anna, stunned, watches him go. Slowly, she turns to the audience and she comically stifles a sob. Once, then twice, then three times. He, he didn't like my advice? Not one thing? Oh, oh, oh no. Oh no, no, no. How terrible, how horrible. My first customer and I bombed. Oh, good grief. Oh, am I ever to help people at this rate? Oh, oh, who am I kidding? I will never be able to do this. Maybe the other girls were right. I'm not advice, Anna. I'm just frumpy old awkward, Anna. She puts her hands to her face in a silent cry. Travis stops walking and looks back at Anna. Slowly, guilt comes over his face, and he looks to the audience briefly. Ugh, oh, I feel like a goon now. I was too hard on her, wasn't I? Yeah, I was. I was. Travis walks back over to Anna, sighs in guilt, then gently taps her on the shoulder. What? <laughs> hey, Anna, it, it's me again. I know, I know, here, your dollar. I did promise you a refund. No, no, it's fine. I wasn't looking for that. I just wanted to say sorry. You, you want to apologize? Yeah, I was being a big jerk back there, Anna. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. Apology accepted. Thank you. The thing is, Anna, sometimes you're just kind of intense. Like, just very in your face and overly elaborate with how you go about things. What's the matter with that? Well, nothing, I suppose. I guess, though, in terms of asking for advice, sometimes it might not come off so well. I can see what you mean. That, that, that came out wrong. I, I don't mean to have you act like someone you aren't. I just, Anna, you're an awfully swell girl. You're smart, you're funny. And between you and me, I think you're real pretty. Pretty? Of course, but most of all, you're you. I mean, are you a bit unusual sometimes? Yeah. Do you overthink things like a lot? Yeah. But honestly... I think it's adorable, really endearing. It's it makes you, well, you. Ah, oh, gee, 
Listen, Anna, do you suppose I could give you some advice? Advice for me? Sure. He hands Travis the doll from earlier. What's this for? I assumed you charged the same as me for giving advice. <laughs> and this one's for free. Friend of friend. Don't get discouraged, Anna. Any kind of business, no matter how good an idea it is, takes time to develop. I admit, I overreacted a bit, but you might find some people who possibly might just not like your advice or agree with it. But don't get bombed. Stick with it, no matter what. You're the smartest girl I know, and I really think you could make this work. And hey, I bet you in no time you'll make enough pocket money to buy a ticket to see me in Oliver. Or, uh, go to the big football game. I still have not quite figured out which one I'm gonna do yet. Travis, why can't all boys be like you, huh? A beat. Anna smiles and flips back over the sign to the kissing booth print. She leans up and kisses Travis on the cheek gently. Travis is surprised, then he smiles and blushes somewhat. I did say I wouldn't be opposed to kissing you, remember? Mm. Almost lunchtime. My mom said she was going to make a peanut butter sandwich on whole wheat bread, my favorite. I'll be back out in 20 minutes. Would you mind watching my booth while I'm eating? <laughs> I'd be glad to. Anna smiles back and walks off stage as Travis slowly plops down into the chair that Anna was sitting in before. He touches his hand to his cheek again, then smiles and chuckles. Golly. Anna might have her quirks, but she really is swell when you really get to know her. Man, that Horace Gluckenmeyer, football and theater, at the same time? Gee, maybe I ought to ask him his thoughts on it. Though considering what happened to him playing football, I somehow think he'll lean towards theater. Travis shakes his head and chuckles again as the lights fade to black.